I first became interested in the story behind the Shuhorn Sonata after reading Betty Jeffrey's book, White Coolies. When I was a lawyer in the late 70s, I tried to buy the rights to White Coolies and the publisher told me that the rights weren't available and the army nurses wouldn't talk to anybody. So I became quite intrigued. I realised these were the heroes that nobody wanted, that they had come home from the war, they had been told basically they hadn't really done anything in the war, they were told not to march on Anzac Day, and they had just remained a very tight and isolated group. And I knew the, hero the heroism of these women was extraordinary. And in a country that celebrated male heroes, I couldn't believe that we weren't celebrating these incredible fem female heroes, these women who had been at the front line of battle, run hospitals under gunfire, had been taken prisoner by the Japanese, tortured and in many cases killed. So I, I waited until 1993 and I found an article by one of the nurses finally breaking the silence and giving an interview. And once I found one nurse, I was able to, to come across nursing and civilian survivors of the war. It was a fascinating story. I, I couldn't believe that, that this part of the war, the part that dealt with women, had just not found a place in our history books. And that these really were the heroes that nobody wanted. Um, I took the play, I was a TV writer, I took the idea around to practically every major television network and none of them wanted to do it. One network said women couldn't carry a TV series, no one would be interested. And the other network said that if the story had really taken place, they would know. And it was, it was kind of an atmosphere of total disbelief. I came to the Ensemble Theatre and I promised Sandra Bates that I could keep the cast down to a very cheap two people and tell the story with a very small budget. And Sandra was terrific. And then I thought, my God, what have I done? I have to tell the entire story of World War II with two people on a tiny budget. And what I did realise, and this is relevant to the HSC portion, is that by using slides, I could convince the audience that this was a true story. The slides show the audience that these events really happened, and they advance the story and they make the audience care about the characters by telling them this is a real story. So the slides, I think, became the most important of my dramatic techniques and very important as an aid to help the audience visualise what happened during the war and what happened to these women. Now, the slides are an essential part of the distinctively visual element. This really is a play that asks its audience to do a lot of work. They have to imagine the narrative. They have to imagine what the characters went through. And other things like the music of the play create a time period. They set an atmosphere. And they are also part of the distinctively visual elements. I do have a website, johnmisto.com, in which I go into these aspects in, in greater length, if you would care to look at them. Um, I suppose the other element of the play that concerned me was we never talk about mateship among women. Mateship has always been primarily a male domain and we always talk about mateship in war, but we never talk about the mateship of women in war. And this was an extraordinary story of women who had only managed to survive horrific imprisonment through their mateship. Through, through their loyalty to, loyalty to each other. And this was a loyalty that extended up until and including 50, 60 years after the war. Because when they came home, no one wanted to know them. The government turned its back on them. They weren't given memorials. They weren't acknowledged. And the only thing that helped them through this really difficult time was their mateship with each other. And these women always kept in close contact. They always supported each other. Um, sadly, the last of the army nurses has died and they did die knowing they would never achieve the recognition that they deserved. I remember one of them actually said to me that they could accept what the Japanese had done to them because war was inhumane and they knew what they were in for, but they never anticipated the apathy that they would receive from the army and from the government when they came home. So I wanted, I'm trying to do in the ensemble, we're trying to do our best to educate 
the public and to keep the memory of these women alive. And it's a wonderful thing that the play has, has been put on the HSC syllabus. So these great heroes, their memory can be kept alive for a future generation.